and welcome. My name is Diver Ruthwin Arvinlow, and I'm a blogger and photographer for Second Life. Today I'm going to revisit some of my older tutorials and do an all-in-one tutorial of removing a green screen, getting rid of the green screen halo, and adding a depth of field looking background to it to make it realistic. So the first thing we need is the green screen image. The most important factors of your green screen image are to make sure that the background is full bright and obviously bright green. If the background is not full bright and you use advanced materials, or advanced lighting, shadows, it will affect the area around your avatar. It darkens it and makes it hard to remove green from that area. So we've got our full bright green screen background. We've got the avatar and now we just need to remove it. So we're going to go to the eraser tool. So it starts out looking like this. You've got your eraser. We click and hold and we go to background eraser tool. And that's going to pull up this sort of crosshair looking uh, brush. So what we want to do is select here. We select sampling once, which means we pick up only one color. Limits discontiguous. Tolerance 100% and then we don't really need protect foreground color. Now with the tolerance at 100%, if you have green undertones in any part of your avatar, it will erase them. So if you have green undertones, which I do not, you're going to have to reduce your tolerance. You can click and drag tolerance down. So you'll have to reduce your tolerance, but unfortunately that means you will leave more green so for instance, let me reduce it a lot. You really only need to reduce it by like 10%. But if I reduced it more to show you, you can see it doesn't remove as much green. So you see there's lots of green left in. So you want it as high of tolerance as possible, which means you do not want green colors or green undertones in your picture when you do a green screen. So we have all of our settings, tolerance at 100, discontiguous, sample once, and then we increase our brush size to match whatever the size of our area is. So we have my brush size at 800 and I'm going to click and hold and just keep holding and drag it around. So you can see it's taking much more green out than when I had my tolerance set lower. So all you have to do is go around. If you do not lift up your finger from the mouse, it will continue to only take the green color. Now inevitably there is some left. It's just the nature of alphas in hair in particular. So to show you, I'll click a new layer and fill it in with white so you can see the green halo. So that's the green halo that's stuck. So in order to get rid of that, we're going to create a new layer and use blending modes to get rid of that effect. So I'm gonna go down here to new layer. I'm gonna click create new layer, brings it up here. Now I'm going to hold Alt and I'm going to clip that to my main layer. When I do that, what that does is it makes it so that my any work I do will not go outside of my main layer. So for instance, if I went like this, you can see it doesn't affect anywhere but my main layer. So what we want to do is take that clip layer, so in this case my layer 2, we're going to take that and we're going to click the blending mode and change to hue from normal, normal to hue. And then we're going to go to grab our paint tool. So we grab a paint brush. I'm using just a regular soft brush. The brush doesn't matter too much when we're doing this. The opacity and flow need to be at 100%, both of them. Mode is normal. Now what I'm going to do is take my paint brush and I'm going to hold alt and that will pull up a sampler. Then I sample a darker color on my hair. With that color selected, you can see here it's taken the color. I'm just going to draw on top of my hair. So I've taken out all of the green you can see before and after. And if I had this on normal, it would paint over my texture of the hair. So instead, when I use hue, it leaves the texture intact but changes the green color to the color of my hair. Now I can 
merge this layer down by using Control E when I have my halo cover layer selected. So I hit Control E and now I have just one layer. Now I want to add a background. So I have this background here, which is a Second Life background. I'll hit Control A to select the whole picture. Control C to copy it. Then I'm going to go back over here and I'm going to hit Control V to paste it. And then I can drag it behind my avatar. Now I have a background, but there's no focus on my avatar. So I want to do a lens blur. So a lens blur is found in the filter menu. So I go to filter, blur, and lens blur. And this is in CS6 right now, so your menus may look a little bit different. Now you can copy these by pausing. It may even be the default, but if you need to pause and copy these settings, you can see it's blurred it out. I'll click OK. Now it has created that blurred look. So you can see before and after. And then to even go a step further, once I'm done with all of my edits, everything is done, I'll flatten this out, flatten the image layer, flatten image, and then I can go back to filter, back to blur, and do an iris blur, which is definitely in CS6, but I do not think in CS3 or lower. So go to blur, iris blur, and then it creates this blur effect that you can adjust. Within the dots, the blur effect is not pronounced. So I can shrink the dots towards my face, and then this will blur slowly out. So the closer to the dots, the less blur, the further out, the more blur. And then outside of the circle, it's pretty much all blurry. And then I can shrink it as needed. And that will help to blend in my avatar into a blurred background to make it more realistic. This is an optional step. You don't have to do that part. So you can see, before I did the blurring, when I just pasted it, it's all clear, there's no focus. But then, after the two types of blurs, I've created this effect where it looks like the avatar belongs, and my face is the focus of the picture. So if you want to show a skin, this is the perfect thing to do. So that's it. If you have any questions, feel free to ask them. Otherwise, just catch you next time. Thank you so much.